name is Alan Grant. I'm a Rails developer as well as the co-founder and CTO of a new startup called Developer Auction. And today I'm going to be talking about the ultra-competitive market for, developing, uh, for developer hiring. So over the last eight years, I started uh, three technology companies. And the one thing that they all had in common is that they all had to hire great engineers. And over the last few years, this has become increasingly, increasingly more difficult. Uh, so let me just, before I start, get a show of hands. Uh, how many people here are looking for engineers or are at companies that are looking for engineers or hiring engineers or developers? Cool. Well, have a look around. These are the people around you that you're competing with for the, exactly the same pool of talent. So the fact is that great engineers are never unemployed. Uh, great engineers that uh, are in big cities like San Francisco and New York, if they get laid off on a Friday, they're probably going to be starting a new job the next Monday. In fact, even if they have one or two years of experience, a big gap in an engineer's portfolio is a big red flag because it's so easy to find jobs as a developer. One email every 31 hours. That is how often right now as a developer in San Francisco you would be getting emails from recruiters. So this is from an excellent blog post by Elaine Wary where she created a fake profile for an engineer named Pete London, a self-proclaimed JavaScript ninja, uh, two and a half years ago. And over two and a half years she's collected uh, basically resumes uh, or requests from recruiters that were trying to hire this fake developer. This has continued even after she's written a blog post about it and revealed that the profile is fake. In fact, the problem is so bad that Google now has 900 recruiters, full-time and contract recruiters, that are out there scouring the internet trying to find talent. These are highly motivated, highly compensated recruiters that are getting paid a lot of times on commission based on the people that they source. So it's no wonder that there is so much recruiter spam happening right now. So we pulled some stats recently, and on Indeed.com, there are 38,000 open jobs at different startups. Uh, this comes from 3,700 venture-funded startups that have raised money in just the last year alone. So these are companies that have raised one, two, three, five million dollars, and the first thing that they do once they've raised this additional capital is that they go out and they try to grow their headcount by finding more engineers for their companies. Uh, the problem has gotten so bad that companies like Google, Facebook, and Twitter are turning to AccuHires to fill their positions. And with AccuHires, now the going rate for a small startup is $1 million per engineer. So if, uh, if you're five guys that built you know, a product over one year, two years, you've launched, you've released, and the startup isn't going well, then you might get picked up by a Google or Facebook for four, five, six, seven million dollars. So here you see some of the uh, some of the job boards where positions are getting posted, like you know, TechCrunch jobs, uh, Stack Overflow careers, Dice, and whatnot. Uh, this is where you'll find these 38,000 jobs and more being posted. Uh, the, these jobs typically take about $500 for a posting, um, but the problem is a lot of these postings go unanswered. Whereas a few years ago, you could do a posting and you might get a few good candidates coming through it. Right now, it's not uncommon to post your job in different places and receive zero qualified candidates. You might get a few people reaching out from outside the US that are looking for H-1Bs, but often nobody that really fits what you're looking to do. Uh, looking at some of the stats recently, we found out that only about 19% of the jobs actually, job postings are actually resulting in hires. So, it's no wonder that hiring developers today is like looking for a needle in a haystack. You're competing with 900 recruiters from Google alone. You're competing with 3,700 venture-funded companies. So what uh, I've done at my previous company and what a lot of people are doing is that they're turning to recruiters. Recruiting is now a $15 billion industry in the US. It's $15 billion that are going to basically contingency recruiters and, uh, and pay for recruiters that are all trying to fill these same positions. There are 32,000 sole proprietors and recruiting agencies in the US alone that are all going after the same limited pool of talent. Developers are really that 5% that are never unemployed. So these are recruiters that are getting contingency fees of 20, 25%, 30%. And uh, it's no wonder that a lot of times now they're turning to, to dirty tricks 
to meet their quota. So some of these recruiters actually have quotas where you have to send a certain number of emails per week. Uh, you have to reach out to a certain number of candidates or a certain number of companies. So some of the things that recruiters are doing is that they're shopping around the same developer resume, these blind profiles to company after company. They're modifying resumes a lot of times to make developers look more appealing, uh, even when that involves actually lying. They're pitching jobs to, to developers that don't actually exist. Um, and a lot of them don't actually understand technology. There are still recruiters out there that think Rails is a form of transportation technology. I'm not kidding you. Uh, so it's no wonder that if you're looking for candidates and you're working with a recruiter, a lot of times you're getting emails from them with candidates that are completely not a fit for what you're looking to do. Or if you're a developer, that a lot of times the recruiters are reaching out are completely clueless about what it is that you're actually good at. So a lot of times this doesn't work. So the result of this is basically a ton of recruiter spam. So I'm sure I'm not the only one that gets a ton of emails. Looking back at the earlier number, every 31 hours there's an email coming in from recruiters. Actually, this reminds me of a funny anecdote. One of the developers we were talking to for developer auction, we asked them, so how many emails do you get from recruiters? And he said, oh, about 25. We we're like, oh, 25 a month? And he's like, no, 25 a week. This is because the guy had Google listed on his resume. So what you do is you just get used to ignoring those things. And all the good opportunities get blocked with the bad. So if you're a fantastic company that's working on really cool technology with great people, with good funding, paying market salaries, a lot of times your emails will go unnoticed, just like all the other ones. The problem is basically that good engineers have an abundance of opportunity. There is far more demand than there is supply. And it's really hard filling all of that demand. There just simply aren't enough people to go around. So everybody gets used to hitting the spam button on these recruiter emails. So this is a problem that bothered me and my co-founders a lot because we're actually trying to find people for, for our previous companies. And so we're, you know, we got together over some beers and we're talking about possible ideas. And uh, one of the guys brought up this, this concept of doing an auction. Because for, you know, for ages now, auctions have been an effective technique for basically solving problems where there is a lot of demand and insufficient supply. So we came up with this concept, developer auction, uh, coded it up, uh, and wanted to see if it would work. And the results have actually been astonishing. So let me tell you about how it works. Basically, with developer auction, uh, developers create a profile, and they apply to basically be in an auction. Uh, right now, we're selecting about 12% of the people that are applying to participate. And we're basically looking for people that uh, have intent to actually look for a new job right now. So people that are act actively searching, people that have good job backgrounds, good education backgrounds, good GitHub portfolios, or good personal projects. So right now we're manually curating the market on both sides. We do the same thing with employers. So right now we've had about 500 employers that have been that have been approved, and generally these are venture funded or profitable and bootstrap companies that have, uh, you know, that are the right kind of technology companies that we think that our developers would, would want to work with. Um, so the way that it works then is that we run a two week auction, and during the course of uh, 14 days, developers receive generally on average between five and 15 job offers. And these offers are coming with full compensation details up front. So what we're basically doing is we're reversing the funnel. Instead of asking a developer to consider an opportunity and only at the end of three days worth of interviewing find out that their offer is one third of their current salary, we basically place all that up front so that you can figure out which opportunities are worth interviewing with. It's all still based on passing the interview, uh, but you at the end of two weeks will have a lot of offers and you can say, okay, I wanna interview with you, with you, with you. And the companies are really happy because they're getting highly qualified candidates because of the curated pool. Um, the way that our revenue model works is that we charge the companies 15% of the developer's first salary, similar to what recruiters do, but generally less. Um, and then we actually give 20% of that back to the developers as a signing bonus. So as soon as you accept an offer you know, on developer auction, you'll receive a check for three to $6,000 additional signing bonus from us. So developers love it because of it. So one of the things that we were wondering at the beginning is what companies actually do this? What companies compete you know, for talent so directly? And we've been you know, very, very pleasantly surprised that uh, yes, they have. So we've had uh, over 500 companies participate, and these include both uh, small startups that have recently received funding, as well as some of the bigger guys like Groupon, Living Social, Quora, and whatnot. So let me share some of the stats uh, from uh, the most recent auctions. So the company is pretty young. We ran our first auction in August of last year, and we've run eight auctions so far. 
We've had 1,400 developers that have gone through the process, and we had $415 million worth of annual salary worth of offers that have happened on the platform in that time. Uh, the average salary is $121,000, um, and we've set up over 1,000 interviews. One of the things that uh, employers were concerned with initially is that we're going to be selecting for the mercenaries. We're going to be selecting for people for who it's really all about the money. But we've seen that that's not the case. We've seen that there's a lot of other things that are important to us as developers, and really we just use this as a way of making the process more efficient. And so what we notice is that the average accepted salary and the average rejected offer are really you know, very close together. They're about the same. So it's not the salary that's causing people to accept one opportunity versus the other. It's culture fit, technology, the people they'll be working with, location, and all the other things that, that generally matter to them. And so how does this compare with a traditional process? Well, only 5% of the developers that go through the auction actually don't respond to their interview requests. Whereas if you're reaching out to people via LinkedIn with like LinkedIn prospect, 95% of the people that you're reaching out with don't accept the initial request. Um, and so we also have some, some feedback about um, you know, what to do when you're hiring developers to, uh, to make the process go smoothly. So one of the things, one of the mistakes that companies often make is that they take way too long responding to candidates reaching out, setting up their interviews. Um, but one of the things that Google found out in some recent studies is that a lot of times additional interviews don't actually increase the likelihood that you've hired the right person. So they did a study a few years ago where they basically analyzed all the hires that they've made and they found that after the first uh, interview or the first couple of interviews, additional interviews are only increasing the likelihood of a hire, uh, or not increasing the likelihood of a hire, but increasing the likelihood that it's the right hire by 1%. So what they've done is that they've shortened it to where it used to take in the 90s about six months to go through the full process, and now it only takes six weeks or less. Uh, the founder of Kayak uh, was once quoted as saying that if he meets a candidate that uh, he wants to close, then he puts a timer for seven days, and his goal is to close that candidate within seven days. So what we recommend doing is doing a phone screen within the first 72 hours after contact is uh, established with a developer that you're interested in, and then very quickly moving to doing an in-person interview. Invite them for a half day, do two or three interviews, you know, have lunch with them, figure out if they're a culture fit, and then if you're still not certain by that point, then maybe give them a take-home coding challenge, but don't drag your feet because obviously developers are very much in demand. Um, so uh, the next auction that we're going to run is actually going to be our first uh, industry-specific, platform-specific auction, and it's going to be launching on Monday. So on Monday, we're going to run a, a short, it's not going to be two weeks, uh, a short auction that's going to be targeted specifically towards Rails and Ruby engineers. And if you're looking for developers or if you're a developer that's interested in opportunities, then you can go to developerauction.com slash railsconf, uh, which will tag you so that we'll uh, review your profile and approve you quicker. So if you want to participate in the next auction, just go to developerauction.com slash railsconf. Um, and now the next thing I want to do is I want to actually show you what a developer profile looks like and what the offers look like so that you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Um, and I may have some trouble actually getting it pulled up, but we'll see. All right, so this is the profile of Nate Clark, who's actually here in the audience. Hey, Nate. <laughs> so Nate actually uh, went through our site, and uh, we ended up hiring him for developer auction. Uh, we met him through the site. Uh, we've made our own bid. Uh, Nate was previously at Pivotal and has, uh, I believe, eight years of Rails experience, and uh, so we thought that he'd be a really good fit. So what you can see here is uh, it's actually really easy creating one of these profiles. You connect your GitHub, LinkedIn, and for the most part, it just imports everything and builds it for you. Here you can see some of the skills that he's listed and uh, his own... Let me see, let me get this cursor over here. So you can see his own description of himself and some of the things that he's done. And on the right side, you can see the offers that have come in, uh, offers ranging from $120,000 to $175,000 from all sorts of different companies. Can you guys see it? Cool. So this is basically how it works. Uh, you know, he's uh, got his work experience that was all imported from LinkedIn, education, things like that. And then there's also this crowdsource interview where employers can ask questions and, uh, and then he'll, he'll respond to them. So this is basically, this is how the site works. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. 
Awesome, cool. Well, uh, great, uh, great meeting you guys, and hope to see you on developer auction.